Ah, yes, I need to, sorry. It's not like team, you just press share, which has you need to press again the button, but yeah. So uh, yeah, let's walk into the agenda. Hello, um, so we have today Ruben, Felix, Chris, and me. Uh, let's update the agenda here shortly with the attendees. Um, can I edit here actually somehow? I think you're not logged in. That's why you're getting all these comments. Yeah, it's... Uh, oh, it didn't ask me to walk in. Um, yeah, maybe you can just edit. I will. Uh, I do the edit. edit. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have to yeah. check why I yeah. don't get the logging page. Okay, let's look into the uh, dashboard. Um, waiting for change. Um, introduce error handling. Um, I actually provided here a review again to the latest changes, uh, constant indeed, um, but I didn't get any feedback here. Um, so this is basically waiting, still waiting for changes uh, from Constantine. Maybe you can ping him again. Okay, fix memory show. What's the state here? Seems like there's consensus mm -hmm. about the approach, right? I think above uh, Kenneth's comments, there was were some questions. Yeah. That means uh, additional changes are required. Yes. Change requested by Kenneth. Um, yeah, so we need still in waiting for changes. I don't know, should we ping someone here? The last comment was three days ago. So that's not awfully long. Okay, then let's wait and check next time. Yeah. There was also one in the other column, the pending merge. Mm -hmm. I saw, but I wanted to finish here and then go. Okay. Back, uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, let, let's finish the waiting for change. Yes, and then, that's okay. Uh, so I will let you replace soon. Six minutes ago. It's rather fresh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Then. Uh, Nothing to do here. Uh, open stacks support. Just 
see if it's in the election here. This is out of our control. Um, so, um, yeah. Okay, let's. Um, So this will be closed soon. Uh, should we bump it or it's waiting? I, mean, I would say we can just leave it in this state. Um, I'm gonna quickly check if they maybe have the issue open, but uh, they in the meantime released a non-pre-release because I think that's the, the blocker, right? We're waiting for. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's still the uh, the latest. The latest, yeah. It's yeah. still the latest. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, we can leave it. It it can close. That's fine. Like it will close by itself, and then eventually, someone will notice again, and then maybe by then there is that gem. Yeah. Really yeah. Fun because we had waited enough and yeah, that's, uh, it's important. If it's important enough, then it will be addressed. I think. We'll raise it. The IPv6, um, so, um, do we have any updates? No, yeah. no. Yeah. no. So Florian is only with us uh, on a few days each week. So um, yeah, it's still in the pipeline, but it will take some time. So I guess I can remove the stale from time to time until it gets done. It's not so important at the moment. Uh, just yeah, just yeah. But with all the context, we should get it in at some point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned that. Uh, the US government is interested. They they have something where they want all their software to use IPv6 internally. So that has at least maybe I mean we're still scoping that out, but maybe it's interesting for to, to look at bugs around IPv6. Like that's a government wide mandate or something from a while back. I learned. So I was aware of that. That would at least clarify the question which comes up from time to time. Is anybody using IPv6, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. So I, I learned of like a, a requirement of having to, to use IPv6. We're still trying to figure out like what that actually means. Like, is it till the load balancer or is it do you also have to go after the load balancer and do you need to do it at like the container to container network level? Um, but yeah, I don't know yet. Okay, um, let's move on. The... Some DNS names that will change to this. So this is uh, most probably still waiting. So, um... Yeah, that, I mean, this cannot be merged, right? This will break yeah. Bosch DNS. So it's just an investigation. And probably it will be closed eventually. Yeah, Justin wanted to understand better how, why they need. <laughs> yeah, the, why they need it in option. the first place. Yeah, yeah the, the, the maybe it's the option they use here, which breaks the uh, DNS configuration. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, let's go to the one which is pending much. 
supporter and clients and stop instances. Ah, so we need here another review, basically. Yeah. It moves them to the this column automatically after one review. Yeah. Don't know if we can configure it to wait for two reviews. Um, can that be reviewed by one of us, or should it better be reviewed from non SAP folks? Or since um, Guyen uh, approved it already, it would be sufficient. Yeah, I think it can be one of us uh, of you all. It's okay, fine. Do you want to walk into this Ruben, or should I? I'm still busy with the VIPs thing, like I uh, that so. And I have so the other. Me... Okay, I will have a look into those. Additionally, um, maybe we can also update the assignments. Okay, pending review. Not such a skill, but it's troubleshooting. Um, so there is no update. We are still waiting to, for Constantine. But yes. the change? Changes requested by Ra uh, Ramon. They asked yeah, to... no, that was weird. Like I asked Ramon about that, and apparently he got a message from Constantine saying that he shouldn't, that he shouldn't approve this because there were concerns. So I don't know, something like that. But now I haven't heard from them. <sighs> okay, I will ping Constantine on uh, Slack about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And I think you are working on this uh, stage to be able to go to bionic ships. Yeah, so currently, so what is this blocked elm or what I'm like, the problem is like what, what to do with like installing a, a, a different kernel, right? This relies on different installing a different kernel and I'm trying out different ways of doing it. Um, the problem is it's in the base OS image and I don't like conditionals in the base OS, OS image, right? Because the idea is that the base OS image is shared across all the stem cells, right? So, so I tried looking into uninstalling a package. So installing the kernel and then in a later stage and installing the kernel and installing the VIPs kernel, but that's not pretty. Uh, I tried lots of different ways, but like installing app packages cleanly is not a thing uh, that I could get to work. So now I finally decided to move it into, uh, move the kernel out of the auto S image. I'm looking at what that looks like. So take take the kernel install stage out of the base OS image. And I think that would be a good pattern because that would allow us to maybe, if we want, uh, install IS specific kernels. Because I think we have talked about this before, right? That that might be a good thing to do to use the optimized kernels. Absolutely, um, yes. Yeah. So maybe for Jamie, we could do that since, I don't know, that would probably be another discussion to have, but maybe that would be a good discussion to have before Jamie goes GA. Um, I remember when we had the Flappy Nick issue, also AWS support, it was the first thing to ask, like, can you use an AWS specific kernel instead of a generic one? And we said, oh, not so easy, <laughs> but it's one of the questions you can get rid of immediately, right? If you have a, yes, a specific kernel, so yes. Besides that, it might have some some advantages we don't know right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it does it does break a bit of the like stem cell like a lot of releases just test one stem cell because the idea is that all stem cells are 
similar or the same across ISs. And this would break that, right? So in theory, Garden should start testing against all the different ISs because the kernels will be different. And that's a component that is integrating with the kernel more or less. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, is, it somewhat weakens the abstraction a little bit. Yeah. Yes, it weakens the abstraction. So. But yeah, this is maybe an option with, so if someone wants to use this option, we all need also to validate most probably uh, this breaks something. So that's what yeah. I'm like, but I, for VIPs, I have to go that route anyway, um, because it, it requires a different kernel, also a different kernel per IS even. So yeah, um, I will create a discussion. Uh, once I get this figured out, I will create a discussion to have the broader discussion about IS specific kernels. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, then the last one. Basically, I am waiting here for you and Ramon uh, because you and Ramon started with the review. Did you finish with your review? I didn't finish because Ramon had already, he found things that should be fixed first. Right, mm -hmm. And I don't want to do like a full re review. Yeah. So I, I'm waiting for these changes and then I'm going to continue my review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. But I'm like, I have all sorts of like comments, but they don't show up until I like submit the review. But I haven't done that. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's walk into the inbox. Was the yes. was five, fifty. No, but we have like a lot of things in the inbox now. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I think they at some point. I think it was Chris. He gave us a lot of new repos, so now we have to deal with all these things. Bl state resources. Sorry about uh, that, and thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. What's this? PPL state, it says. This is quite old. Um, should we go now over all the... I probably should you know, like look into enabling the stale bot for these things first. Yeah, yeah. It because probably we want the still board to send in a message to all of these to see if there's still an interest and otherwise they go away. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, because this one, for example, is uh, yeah, quite old. Um, What's the exemplar release? It's an example release of Bosch. So is it the idea that this is like, should demonstrate how you should do things? think so. Okay. I Which thought is not trustworthy if it's very outdated, right? <laughs> wow, it is documentation because... and stuff. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Well, it's outdated. Um, I thought everybody would just use Zookeeper release from Dimitri. At least all the test pipelines are using that. Yeah, it takes some time. Um, yeah, yeah, so maybe these things should just be archived. But yeah, it's maybe. uh four, five, four, five years old. Um, yes, yeah, let's uh, um, add the automation to this new repos. And yeah, uh, I don't see anything which is. A jump box deployment, Bosch bootloader, example release. Yeah, no, that's all just the things that we inherited. Yeah. So there is no. 
At least the sync <laughs> automation works. <laughs> yeah, good point. Oh, wow. It also works here. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Um, okay. So there's fee, Borsch fees for CPI release. May 10th. Yeah, on the top, going. Um, yeah, this is basically open for contribution. Yeah. So it looks like. Um, yeah, he is currently on the watch team. Do you know whether this is something which will be addressed or? Um, because um, I'm also not, not fully sure this is, a, I mean, it does break pre-compilation, but pre-compilation doesn't work with Bosch Create then, right? So that's the, and you cannot have pre-compiled releases. For the CPIs. For the CPIs. Yeah, that's correct. Unless you deploy Bosch's with Bosch, then you can have pre-compiled releases for CPIs. And that's what you, you all do, right? You have like a dev Bosch or something and then an, another layer of Bosch. Yes. But we don't use compiled releases, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but you can <could>. also... <laughs> I'm not yes. sure. I, I was looking into this. Something was special with the CPI uh, releases. And Isn't the, so the problem with the CPI releases with Bosch Create Env is that the manifest that you compile the CPIs once on your host machine that you're deploying from, and then you also compile them on the stem cell, the same release to put on the, the director. Yeah. But if you go deploy the Bosch with a Bosch, a full Bosch, then you don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, it works with the local one, which is not at the stem cell, yeah, uh, with all and to create and... Um, so in that case, I mean, it is a bit of a theoretical issue, but looking at the local architecture, it's not ideal when doing compiled releases. But it's still a theoretical thing because this is a CPI. Right, I'm talking about that comment. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, you can now select all these fields. Mm -hmm. They can change the status, I guess, to from inbox to discussion or something. So, yeah, or open for contribution, maybe even. Um, yeah. And that should, yes. 
Okay, all these these issues we probably want the steelbot for. Wow, uh, uh, has the, lots of issues. We all this help somehow. Uh, so I mean, you, you can filter in the top, um, in that um, you have type issues area VM deployment lifecycle, like that. A bit, yeah, there. And after that, you can start typing. After um, the cross or something, and then you can start type like repository. Here somewhere. No, 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 yeah, not here, but like the, the, just at the end of this line, basically, or in the middle. Yeah, there, yeah. Space and then repository. Uh, but there are oh, yeah, not, uh, there's an excludes, right? Exclude at the top, it said excludes, exclude repo, yes, and then mm -hmm. watch bootloader. Oh, That helps. Um, okay, so there's nothing in the inbox. Yeah, there's nothing. Great. Um, are there any other topics? I would have an uh, ad hoc topic. Um, so, uh, Ruben, you are aware away the coming weeks, right? And Ramon is also away. And um, regarding the whole stem cell publishing topic, um, we decided internally to pair one of our engineers with uh, Ramon um, to hopefully release the stem cell next week and then also be able to look into a few things in his absence or during his absence and potentially work, continue to work with him afterwards. Um, and one aspect is that he's not yet part of the Cloud Foundry organization. And the current process would basically be to create a PR towards this contributor a file, I guess. And someone would need to confirm that or proof, I guess you, Ruben, as working group lead. And then we could add him to the Bosch stem cell team. And, yeah, um, but that also goes through that org file. OK. Then we could do it all at once. Yeah, it's just one PR. Yeah. Um, we just need to expedite it a bit to get it merged. But we should. Like, that. Yeah. So I will be, I will be there for the TOC meeting next week, mm -hmm. and then on Wednesday I will be off, starting Wednesday. Okay. And that means that is the place where this would need to be discussed and can be merged, or how how. Yeah, like so if we should, I, I don't know, it's a bit vague if we need TOC approval to get people into the org, but I mean, let's make a PR and then. Yeah. Can make, yeah, make sure. Yeah, we can look you, into that. Yeah, if you ping me with the PR, then I will make sure that it's discussed at the TOC. Yeah. Or you can add it maybe to the TOC channel as well, the TOC channel. Yeah, I will do both and let's see yeah. what happens. Yeah. And um, the, quest, the second request would then also be like, if you are away and Ramon, who um, he or we could ping in case like we need a quick stem cell release or there's some kind of a problem. Yeah, so I think Brian Cunny has been involved with the uh, Jemmy stem cell work. Mm -hmm. So he and also Joseph Palermo um, and Constantine. I mean, I, I think all of those people should have access. Okay. Yeah, that's sufficient then, I guess. Yeah. I, I think Brian Connie has the most context on like the, at least that, that whole setup. I mean, it's really similar to what we have internally, like in our concourse, because it's using the same templates. Um, 
But I think at least Brian Gunny has really recently got the Jemmy stem cell together with Ramon. Uh, and that should be the same as the Bionic. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. So we should be okay with the vacation times of okay. Ramon. <laughs> I mean, who allowed Ramon to go on vacation? I mean, like, that's, that's the discussion we should have in the first place. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and um, maybe a, a second question. Uh, it's more like a mid long term question is um, so we currently have all this uh, version scanning for CVEs and everything. And uh, for most Golang based projects, on the VMware side of things, um, we have automated bumping, right? But not for the Ruby uh, projects like Bosch and a few CPIs, I guess. Um, and I was just wondering, was would that be at some point an investment area, or if Probably not, the Ruby is I guess like less safe. Yeah, like the the, the thing is with with Go, the compiler will start screaming when something goes wrong you don't actually have that with Ruby, right? You can have things bump and like totally have breaking changes everywhere. And yeah, I mean, like, ideally your integration test should catch it, but <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a bit more risky. Like, yes. Actually, you want the human usually to look at it. Yes, uh, totally right. But maybe at least someone can get to the area of getting automatic PRs for that to get rid yes. of the manual uh, code line yeah, that, changes for bumping that, things. Um, and, stuff, I, yeah. and then I was just wondering right now, since it's still in the Ember uh, build infrastructure, probably it's also hard to contribute from the outside towards such a thing or not, maybe, maybe. That's the really. bots. Yeah. That could be something we could look at, right? Dependable, we can just configure. And then so it will at least complain and maybe mess with gem files. Yeah, but I think that it actually, we already have it configured in some places. That I, I did work to exclude all those bots. So this view that we are looking at all the time is yeah. excluding bots yeah. because they are a bit noisy. I don't know, like, what what... How would you want to go around about doing that? Like, do we want to assign people to review those bumps, dependency bumps? Maybe. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe, yes. Yeah, like I, initially my thought was like, we had too much PR or too many PRs, too much work. So it felt like, yeah, I wanted to scope it down. So I, yeah, taking those out of scope was like a good first step. Um, but I mean, like, I feel if we want to start reviewing all of those, then we probably need more reviewers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we need um, to grow the, the pool of reviewers before starting tackling that. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, it's more like a midterm or long-term question, as I said, because, um, yeah, right now we're bumping a few things here and there, and potentially if this go on and go on over a few months, like, we would have this discussion, like... Um, should we yeah. move it somewhere else to an earlier point? And then of course we would also need to bring the people who review it, but it's the same work. It, it would just happen a little bit earlier, not only after the fact we consume something, but right in the repository, right? Um, and just wanted to yeah, get some yeah. feeling about like what would be options in the future. Yeah, I would be totally open for that, but I, I would say we, we need to yeah have more people to review things. Yes. So um, I think, and I mean, I can try to bring in some people from VMware, that, that's okay. But we also want to have it balanced. I think that was like one of the things that we want. We don't want to, it to be like a VMware only party. Um, so that's why I'm a bit hesitant to do that uh, at this point. To enable bots so that we get notifications, you mean, and PRs? Yeah, I mean, like I, I, yeah. would, I would want to like have more people in the pool for reviews. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like if SAP can contribute a few of those people, then we can also match that number with VMware people and then we grow the pool quicker. Yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. So I fully understand that this goes together. 
Um, but um, just would like to understand options for how to go forward at some point in time. Yeah. So right now we just do it manually and see how this grows. Maybe it doesn't even grow so much and it's okay like to do it manually the same way we did do it now. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. So, that's an so, option, right? So we could go that way. Um, yeah, for, first step would be to get someone to go to like a contributor, uh, get contributor rights and then mm -hmm. uh, move up to uh, approver um, if we go that route i think it will be fine yeah then we can enable it in like i don't know say a month or two start incorporating that in the, the review process after we have a few more approvals again. yes yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that would that would take like probably a month or two to, to get mm -hmm. that all sorted out yeah the harder part is uh, to validate the change, which maybe could be automated. Yeah, so the other thing would be like uh, run CI on PRs, right? That would be a good yeah. thing, but that's also really expensive. Or at As least in, have like, an option manual that somehow um, trigger the validation. Yeah. Somehow. At so, the beginning, yeah. at least, yeah. Yeah. I, for that part, I think the requirement would also be to have those repository moved over to foundation-owned infrastructure, right? Because then nobody else can really contribute. Yeah. yeah, sure. Or we could, like a cheaper option, like a more hybrid approach would be to maybe uh, have some GitHub actions for just running unit tests, right? That would already catch a, quite a lot of issues. Like at least the most basic, that would probably, like if I would review such a thing, I would probably start running the unit tests myself anyway, right? So if we can automate that, and I mean, the integration test, that's gonna be difficult, right? Because there you need all sorts of um, infrastructure, but the unit tests usually just should work fine on the GitHub actions. Yeah, and I think if you have some uh, patch level gem bumps, and the unit tests are still green, the probably is all is good, right? And it's a, yeah. a good candidate to invest further validation. Yes. Yeah. Okay, understood. But that means more approvers, then we can get more PRs, and we can also hook um, up a unit test execution. So that would be a three-step approach to, yes. to, to get this at some point in time, right? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't update the notes, but. Uh, oh, yes. I will do <laughs> after the meeting. Okay. I don't know why I can't walk in here. Okay. Anything else? And we are done for today. See y'all see y'all in a while. Or yeah. See for that was see you. nice. Enjoy vacation if you don't uh, hear anything from each other. <laughs> yeah, my vacation will be in that room. I'm gonna work on my kitchen. My father in law is <laughs> coming over, so <laughs> 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 if it's really urgent with the stem cells, I can always like not that far <laughs> away from my computer. So, so <laughs> good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.